Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Factor Cat Paranormal Files. My name is Wes, this is Top Shelfers, and in this series, we dive into paranormal videos from across the web and decide whether or not they are Factor Cap or real or fake. Why well, give a shit about my opinion? I've been doing it for 15 plus years. I've had a lot of experiences, but I'm, I, I hold strong that it's 95% of the stuff is faked, and only 5% of it is something that we really can't explain. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how this series has gone so far. There's been a lot of fakes, a lot of content creation, but there has been a few where I'm I'm stumped. And today is our podcast movie <laughs> the compilation, whatever you want to call it, episode. We're doing the top 20 scariest ghost videos of the year from Nuke's Top 5, who we've been watching a lot of lately. Uh, make sure to go check out and give him a subscribe. Give him a subscribe. Subscribe to his channel. Um, I think he's one of the best uh, content creators when it comes to compiling uh, paranormal videos. And today I'm going to do all hour and 25 minutes of his video, which means this video is probably going to be like two and a half hours long. So strap in, get something to eat, get something to drink. And let's dive into some ghost videos. And before we do, make sure you subscribe or I'm gonna fight your dad. Okay, let's just hop into it. Turn off the lights and go full screen because it's the top 20 scariest ghost videos of the year. The Tower of Terror. In what's supposed to be the happiest place on earth, an ominous mock grand hotel towers above the awestruck happy crowd below. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror in Disney's California Adventure Park is a free fall ride that's dedicated to the popular TV show, The Twilight Zone. Now over the years, the Tower of Terror attraction became known for one particularly creepy real life ghost story. It is said that a Disney cast member suddenly suffered a massive heart attack and passed away while welcoming guests onto the ride. Many visitors and employees claim to have seen his ghost and have reported random noises and flickering of the lights, even when the ride is not in operation. Sam Worth was visiting the park and recorded videos to capture the fun trip with his family. To his surprise, he also captured something he did not expect at the Tower of Terror. A strange translucent apparition can be seen on one of the levels at the Tower of Terror. Now many of Sam's viewers believe the figure to simply be another hologram on the ride. But I looked through hours of footage of this ride on YouTube and I have not found any evidence of there being a hologram at this particular spot on the ride. In fact, this is the area on the ride where a picture is taken of the guests. <laughs> So the creepy apparition remains a mystery. But Sam isn't the only one who captured bizarre footage on the Tower of Terror. In this next video, a maintenance man is doing a routine safety and quality check on the Disney ride. He's completely alone. Or is he? The uncut footage is over two minutes long, but to save time, I just cut the video down to the <laughs> spookiest parts. Did you see it? A bizarre figure appears on a seat behind the maintenance man, but it's only visible for less than a second, three twentieths of a second to be exact. The figure then moves two seats away right next to the oblivious worker and it appears two more times. Again, I check to make sure that there are no hologram effects in place in the seating area and there are none. Also, the hologram effects that appear on the ride show multiple characters, and none of them are seated as these figures appear to be. 
so it seems very unlikely that this would be a reflection. So just what is this? Could it be that the spirit of the man who suddenly lost his life on the Disney ride is still around? Or is it just some very, very strange light reflection? You decide. Mirror? I mean, I have a couple things. Okay, first off, how funny is it that poor guy probably has been on that ride a million times? Because you could just see that there's just zero fun in his face. And he's just going on there to check the ride. And loses his hat. Um, as far as the paranormal goes, there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stories revolving around Disneyland and Disney World and the paranormal and the unusual, lots of, di like, lots of undisclosed deaths and a lot of, you know, their old history and some weird stuff, like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride having real human skulls and their human bones and people disappearing at the park never to be found and it's a small world after all like weird stuff revolving around that that's a whole other video in regards to what i think i just saw the first one where the apparition is outside hanging out i definitely think that that's something that they did because they have been known disneyland not like they they've been known to put little easter eggs and shit throughout the park all the time without like really any announcement and just you know it could be there one week and it could be gone one week like for example when i was a kid i went to disneyland i went i happened to be there one of the days that they did like the crazy cool like animatronic slash um animated uh genie from aladdin and he like flew around the park and stuff like they have like <laughs> Disney's worth so much money that they had more advanced tech for their theme parks than people realize. <clears throat> now, as far as the second video goes of the guy on, like, doing the test ride or whatever, that one's a little bit more interesting. Um, I'm, I'm still going to have to disagree with Nukes, even though he did the research. I, I've been on that ride, and RIP that they got rid of it being the Twilight Zone. That was the dumbest movie they could ever make. There is parts of that where there's lots of reflections. Now, I guess, I, I don't know. I, I think that, have you guys, if you guys have been on the Haunted Mansion ride or know of the Haunted Mansion ride, there's a part of it where, like, you turn around on these, like, mirrors and it shows, like, ghosts sitting with you and it's, like, really silly or whatever. I think they do the same thing on that ride that if there's empty seats there happens to be like a ghost riding with you or something creepy like that. I don't think that it's something paranormal, sadly. Mirror. Paranormal investigator Amy from the YouTube channel Shadow Hunters UK TV is joined by fellow ghost hunters Moxley's Paranormal and Ghosts on Trent as they stay at the infamously haunted 30 East Drive in Pontefract, England. They say that long ago in this very same location, a monk was hanged for taking the life of a young girl. The house is said to be haunted by his angry spirit, which they call the Black Monk. Throughout the house, there are CCTV cameras installed, and one of them captures a very bizarre and chilling event, as Amy simply looks at herself in the upstairs bedroom mirror. She makes like a creepy smile. <gasps> oh, <laughs> oh. Amy's face appears to distort into a horrifying gaping maw. Her mouth opens up to such an impossible extent that the investigators believe that they might have captured a paranormal transfiguration. The video is definitely very creepy and doesn't appear to be a digital glitch. But just what do you think happened here? Let me know down in the comments. You can watch the full two-part investigation at the Haunted 30 East Drive over on the YouTube channel Shadow Hunters UK TV. Nukes top five. That's pretty creepy. I'm not gonna lie. Think happened here. Let me know. It sucks that we're not getting a recording of like them in like. Oh, I guess it is. Why is the recording so bad? Like, see how it's all like really, really pixelated right here. That's the only thing that like completely discredits the video. 
Because, like, in my head, what we're looking at is I bet that something completely irrelevant to this happened. Like, she saw something on her face or she was tired and yawned or whatever it is, like, yawned and covered her face. And then, I don't know, I'd have to watch the whole video. And then when they played it back, they saw that it looked very creepy. But in reality, it's just like a pixelation of her yawn. And it makes it look fucked up because we're in like a weird color balance for what I assume they're probably in a dark room or something like that. I don't think it's paranormal. It's very creepy looking, but that same effect has been done on movies and shit all the time. It just sucks because it's so pixelated. I guess I shouldn't say pixelated. The frame rate's all fucked up. Yeah, I, I think that she yawned. And then when they played it back, they saw that it looked creepy and think it's paranormal. And maybe she even in the moment thought it was, or excuse me, out of the moment thought it was. Railway to nowhere. YouTube gamer and urban explorer Mr. Omega often goes on overnight challenges to explore abandoned and spooky places in his country of New Zealand. This time he plans to stay overnight in the deserted Spooner's Tunnel an old train pass that was dug out of the mountain by hand back in 1891. Unfortunately, the railway line suffered financial difficulties and the tunnel was never connected to the railway system. The tunnel was eventually closed and dismantled back in 1955. The passageway was dubbed, quote, the railway to nowhere. YouTuber Mr. Omega decides that the creepy old abandoned tunnel is the perfect spot to film an overnight challenge. Okay, here we are here. The only person I have with me is Max. You know, man's best friend and everything. Oh Shout man, out look Max. at that. There's a vehicle over there that's burnt out too. Oh man, look at it. Hope it's not a popular spot for people to come up and do gosh knows what. Okay, I'll pull over here. Okay, before we even go into the tunnel, as you can see, it's totally pitch black. Uh, it's too dark to go in there without any form or source of light. So uh, that's the next thing we need to get out of the pack. Oh, there's my baby. <laughs> this is my massive dolphin torch. Uh, it's a really good torch, as you can see. It pretty much shine right down to the end of the tunnel there. So uh, this thing will do the trick, I'm sure. So Mr. Omega and his loyal doggy Max head into the tunnel to find a spot to set up camp for the night. I managed to secure myself a place to uh, stay for the night. And as you can see, out here, it is totally dark now. It's, the sun's gone right down. There's no more light left. If I turn my light off, now this, this is the freaky thing. When I turn this light off, it is totally pitch black and silent. You ready? Here we go. Wow. That is just, that's spoopy, if you ask me. I feel good having the dog here. Where are you, Max? Max! There you are, there he is. I feel better having my dog with me. I mean, obviously, if I didn't have Max, it'd be a little bit creepy. Obviously, I feel like safer with my dog uh, being here. He will always bark if anyone comes uninvited to uh, visit us in the night. So I'll always wake up. I'm a light sleeper as well, so I'm always going to wake up to hearing Max's bark. Don't know, Max. I'm always going to hear what you're going to say. Around 4 a.m., things start to get really weird. Omega discovers that he has no cell reception inside the tunnel, and so along with Dog Max, he heads back to the opening to check his phone. After that, he starts to trek back inside the tunnel, and then this happens. We're gonna complete our overnight challenge. Yes, yes we do. All right, Max, let's go back in. Here it is. Woo! Max! Damn, <laughs> I hear some sort of tune out of Max, come here. Come here. <sighs> Max. Who's that? Who's that, Max? What the action? Can you guys, can you guys hear that? Max, where is it? I don't know if you guys can hear this on the camera, but there's something. What is that? What 
be. Hello? What is that? Max, what is that? Hello? Is there somebody here? That's just creepy as... What the hell? Is anyone here? What is that? Oh! Max! Hurry up! Max! Max! Get... A creepy little toy is just lying in the middle of the path, playing a warbly rendition of Happy Birthday. Omega turns around and is shocked out of his skin as he sees a man lurching toward him out of a crevice in the tunnel wall. He just makes a run for it. Now, Mr. Omega says that he is absolutely stunned by what happened. He has no idea why anyone would be hiding in the cold abandoned train tunnel at 4 a.m., especially because the tunnel is in the middle of nowhere, miles away from any house. Another truly baffling part of this incident is that the dog Max did not react at all to the creepy stranger, almost like the man was not even there. And perhaps most disturbing of all, why did whoever this was set out a creepy little toy in the path? Either way, paranormal or not, this encounter is absolutely terrifying. You can watch the entire exploration over on the YouTube channel Mr. Omega. Hmm. <laughs> creepy video. Oh, it's fucking. It's a real, real creepy one. I even got the chills down my leg. I always say, <laughs> call me a whatever you want. Like, go with people when you do this shit. Like, because, like, the scariest thing about paranormal, like, investigations is people out in the world <laughs> like it's not like here's the thing is i can confidently say that there is no real evidence of anyone dying from like a ghost <laughs> i'm sorry like if you can disagree with me you can say exorcists and possessions and all that type of stuff i don't believe it for a second um i'm sorry i don't i don't i also don't believe in demons or any of that crap which is why paranormal is such an interesting subject for me because it's kind of the ultimate equalizer in my brain. With that being said, people have been murdered <laughs> out paranormal investigating because they either go alone or they go to places that they know they shouldn't. Meaning like, you know, that there's people who are living there to try and, you know, homeless type of situation. I I think it's dumb to go investigating alone because a situation like this can occur and if that guy really wanted to cause him and his dog harm, he could have, for sure. Like, if he was there the whole time and he knew that they were there, like, he for sure could have. Um, I was definitely fit sitting on the fence really early on when that toy started going off because, like, Typical little creepy kid's toy, like, that's just hitting another stereotype. But it did seem like he had some genuine fear when he saw the person, and then they ran off. His dog not reacting, whatever. Like, they're, when dogs become such high-level good boys, that they, they really don't react like that anyways. Like, my dog, I don't think, would react like that. Like, I think he would react like this guy's dog more than, like, a guard dog. Like, he's not trained to be a guard dog. He's trained to be a good boy. <laughs> you know, like, it's, it's a different thing. I definitely don't think there's anything paranormal here. Um, whether or not it's real or fake for views, that could be up for interpretation. But regardless, very creepy. Very creepy. If you see a video that you think would be perfect for the top five, or if you have a ghost hunting channel and you caught something great, contact me at nukes.5 at gmail.com. The Weeper. A little over a year ago, a Japanese man who goes by the name Yama Q was looking for a rental home. 
He found a nice 40-year-old renovated house in Japan with an incredibly low rental price. Yama was blown away and he happily signed the rental contract right away. But as you might suspect, Yama soon discovered just why the house's rental price was so low. You see, the home carries a bit of a dark history. The house's previous owner tragically passed away inside the home's bathroom from an undisclosed illness. Only four months after Yama moves in, strange things begin to happen in the dead of night. Yama Q starts a YouTube channel and begins to record the increasingly spooky activity around his home. Night after night, a mysterious knocking sound can be heard coming from the bathroom. No matter how hard he tries, Yamakyu is never able to find the source. He has no idea what could be causing this terrifying phenomenon. One night, Yama is a bit disturbed when a neighborhood dog shows up at his home. The dog is usually quiet and friendly, but this time it seems distressed by something. Much wow, Bork. <laughs> It's a real life Doge coin. The dog aggressively growls and barks at something Yama can't see. The next day, he finds the dog back at its neighborhood home, Aww. safe and sound, and friendly as always. But that certainly isn't the end of Yama Q's paranormal problems. Only nine months after moving in, he experiences something truly terrifying. A blood-curdling wail can be heard coming from right outside Yama's living room window. But when he goes outside to investigate, the creepy moaning suddenly just stops. As Yama Q's YouTube audience grows, his many shocked viewers request that he get better equipment to capture the supernatural phenomena. Yama orders a thermal imaging camera and waits for his next opportunity to record and capture what's going on in his home. And this is where things take a turn towards the truly bizarre. Because one month later, this happens.
With two cameras ready, Yama goes on the attack as he throws boiling hot water at the spot where the weeping voice seems to be coming from. Whatever is making the noise seems to cry out as the scalding water is thrown, and then all goes quiet. But nothing shows up on the thermal imaging camera. To this day, Yama Q still experiences horrifying events at his haunted home in Japan. But is it real? Could the wailing voice and aggressive knocking be the spirit of the previous owner who passed away in the bathroom? Let me know what you think. A window. Okay, let's be honest with each other. With today's uh, rent prices and mortgage prices and house prices, I would live with a ghost right now for cheap prices. I mean, come on. Um, very interesting. Very, very, very interesting indeed. Now, I'm going to give you guys two separate reactions here. Okay. One, we'll just say if this is all paranormal... It's very, very creepy. Um, Japan does have a pretty high level or a high volume of paranormal experiences, but I don't think they necessarily call it paranormal. More like, I mean, I guess it is paranormal. It's just a different light. Um, the knocking's definitely creepy and it doesn't seem to stop. The dog barking listen dogs do this shit like i buy ship coin and boost my money okay that's all i'm saying um no jokes aside like the dog thing doesn't really frighten me dogs just being a dog the moaning stuff and to like, investigate early on i was like dude it's just gonna be like a poor little like special needs person that's kind of what it sounds like and i like i yeah but it, it, it's definitely creepy. The boiling water is something that I haven't ever seen before. Is that is that the joke, right? Like, how do you make holy water? You boil the hell out of it. <laughs> um, and then I I don't know. I I don't believe it. I I don't because I'm gonna I'm gonna rattle off what I think everything is. Okay, first off, the bathroom. I love, and this is really smart too on his behalf, whether he thinks this is real or if he is faking the content, he goes outside but he, around his home. on this first like knocking thing and shows you the outside perspective that there is nothing in there. Okay. So which makes me think what it is. I think there's something wrong with his pipes and his plumbing. I think that there's something that is making a knocking noise. Um, I don't know. I guess it is weird because it stops when he opens the door. I, I, I don't think that it's paranormal. The dog, I think, is just being a dog. And this moaning thing, I feel like there is a speaker or his phone or something that is not in frame. And it's just going and going. And then he, he and when it does the gra like the loud moan or growl groan when the water gets hit i think he just knew the timing of it if he's faking the content if i was faking this content that's what i would do um and you know what that might be something that you see this year i've been thinking long and hard about it all the shit that i talk on this channel about fakes and shit i think i'm gonna make some fake paranormal videos to show you guys how easy it is to fake nowadays um, I would do it here. It'd be labeled as parody so you guys know, but there's so much you can do nowadays. It's crazy. And that's what I think it is. Because it's, it's it's a convenient story, right? Move into this new house. It's super cheap. And it's cheap because it's haunted. That really doesn't exist. Uh, maybe it does more in Japan. I, I'm not sure, but I know here in the United States, like, especially with the amount of greed and capitalism someone is not going to discount their property because it's haunted they might discount it because people have died in it or murdered in it because it has like a stigma but it's not because of paranormal serious fence by the english monarchy but not gets window to the soul so this is a story that starts weird and just gets weirder 
But first, a little bit of history. Way back in 1679, Irish Catholic priest Oliver Plunkett was arrested for supporting the Catholic faith, which at the time was considered a serious criminal offense by the English monarchy. He was held in Newgate Prison in London before being executed. And so here's where things get really weird. Over 240 years later, in 1921, Oliver Plunkett's head, yes, just his head, was brought to St. Peter's Church in Drogheda, Ireland, where it was put on display in a garish, ornately decorated glass box. The St. Peter's Church also placed on display the prison door of Oliver Plunkett's jail cell from Newgate Prison, where Plunkett was held for eight months before his execution. We've seen this one. We reviewed this one this year. YouTube user Vicky Bramshaw was on vacation when she visited St. Peter's Church in Drogheda, Ireland. She is recording the exhibit of Oliver Plunkett's jail cell door when she catches something absolutely unnerving. This is the door of the cell in Newgate Prison where St. Oliver Plunkett was in prison for eight months. This is a very really interesting figure because he was, he was one of the first ecumenical Christian priests. There is a small opening in the ancient jail cell door, and some pale, ghostly face just seems to peek out of it at them. Vicky says she has no idea what this face could be. She says she has no knowledge of visual effects to fake something like this, and she didn't even notice the face until she reviewed her footage later. So is this the ghost of Oliver Plunkett still peering from his old jail cell door? Or is it just a very, very odd trick of the light? You decide. Last. I think that video is actually what made me create a fake picture for you guys when we did get that video sometime last year. Uh, I don't. I, I think it's fake. I think it's done in post, or there's just a lighting thing. I don't think that is a head. I don't think that's anything paranormal. However, I still stand by it. That would have been a cool fucking exhibit to go to. The fact that they kept Homeboy's head preserved and take it around to museums and churches and shit is wild to me. Like, humans are just so fascinating, man. Like, ugh, they're the, the real paranormal, man. They're the real creepy. How crazy would that be? Like, you go see just dude's head who was executed for not believing in the church. Wild. <laughs> Stop. This next viral video was shared by multiple social media accounts on the internet, but none of them mentioned the original source. The video shows a man inspecting an old abandoned bus somewhere in the rural countryside of Japan. Of course, as you might expect, things take a terrifying turn. As the man approaches the entrance to the bus, a girl can be seen watching him from the window. He quickly looks inside, but there's no one there. Now because there's no source, it's impossible to say whether this footage is real or fake. But as always, I leave that up to you to decide. <clears throat> Mistake. That's always a real hard part about a lot of videos that come out of Japan um, in the paranormal world is I a lot of them don't have sources. And I do believe that there's a lot of them that are like film students who are making paranormal films to show off their skills and stuff like because that's a good edit. I know it's definitely not paranormal. It's a good edit. It, it just without a source, it's hard to believe already like it doesn't matter what we're talking about paranormal or something else but also just being perfectly like i don't know it just 
the lighting doesn't really make sense with what we just saw. It really doesn't. And it, I don't know. I, I just, like, oops. I was trying to pause on it. Do, 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 the paranormal ghost. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Sorry, just trying to get to the point of, like, it's, I don't know. It just doesn't, it's just so good if it's real, right? Like, you got a full head, eyes, nose, mouth, you got your shoulders, and then you got whatever this issue is right here. It looks like it's even like a different, like a complete, on a completely different, like frame set. Like, meaning like it looks like that was added into post and then when they flipped it over to this area, it's just like a whole different outlook. Even this looks different. There's not as much light shining through now. It's just, it's got to be a short, man. Some sort of video, some sort of film editing situation, school project, who knows. I leave that up to you to decide. Mistaken Identity. The next few videos were uploaded to TikTok by a widower from Tennessee who prefers to keep his identity anonymous. He says that he's experienced some odd things in his house over the last 11 years, but recently the activity has become much more extreme. He sets up security cameras to capture the bizarre incidents, and he says that he believes that the spirit might be the ghost of his beloved deceased wife coming back to visit him. So early one morning before heading out to work, the man walks into the kitchen to discover this. Well, as you can see, it's morning, guys. Uh, this is just a quick update because I got to get to work. Uh, but when We've I covered this got up too. this morning to get my coffee, uh, I walked into the kitchen and saw this. So I guess you guys were right that uh, activity seems to be picking up because I have been, you know, doing renovations. I replaced all this stuff. This. Uh, dishwasher, the stove, the oven hood there. Uh, but this morning when I came into the kitchen, I noticed the cabinet was open and then I noticed this chair. Uh, so I checked the ring video and it definitely <sighs> freaked me out. So When he reviews his ring cam footage, it shows a chair sliding all around the kitchen on its own. And then a pale white figure seems to appear from nowhere and violently tosses the chair to the floor. But things are about to take an even more terrifying turn because one day the man starts to hear something walking up and down his hallway. He goes to investigate and what happens next chills him to his core. Hey everyone. Um... Remember I said uh, I didn't know how I'd react if um, this thing started touching <sighs> It started walking towards me. <sighs> and I feel a hand on my back. And I heard someone whisper. I could, it was faint. But when I heard it walking away from me, I finally felt like I could move. And I, 
ran, um, the whispering. It was a voice. It was, um, a lot of people. His people seemed stuck. They were all saying, help me. Hey, guys. So, I, uh... As he ex- RC f- spirit of so his deceased I've... wife, he yeah. now believes that it might be multiple spirits, or perhaps a deceased. I, I'm I'm gonna I skip forward because I I hold the same opinion as I did last time I watched this one. I I think that there's something bigger going on for that gentleman. I, I and I don't feel like commenting on his paranormal stuff just in the sense of like he he lost his wife and it seems like he's not mentally stable not in the sense of like psychotic but in the sense of like he might be holding on to this hoping that maybe his wife is somewhere around and I, I don't think that I think sometimes things are bigger than just uh, a you know a, a ghost video on YouTube you know I, I hope that he can find the solace solace he needs and whatever it is that he does because I'm sure it's not easy. RC Fun TV travels to an abandoned house in Batambang, Cambodia. Locals claim that in 1994, the land used to be a graveyard for hundreds of deceased men, women, and children. Eventually, the land was sold and the owner had the cemetery excavated and the bodies burned to make room for his new family home. Shortly after the completion of the house, allegedly several members of the family were repeatedly pulled out of their beds by an invisible force. Soon after, the family began to suffer from horrible, unexplained diseases. Fearing that they were cursed by the angry spirits of the former graveyard, they left the home and never returned. The small wooden house has now been abandoned for over 10 years. The Cambodian paranormal team prepares a ceremonial offering for the restless spirits that might be haunting the home. During the preparation, they are interrupted by something they can't explain. Okay, uh... ไปมั้ยอันนี้ยังมาเรียนจอมสมัยนี่เราจอมเป็นหมวกกันอยู่นะแต่เราไม่ยังมาแบบนี้ยังมาเรียนจอมสมัยนี่เราจอมเป็น
one of the team members comes face to face with a ghoulish pale apparition peeking out of the window. Out of shock, both team members forget their own safety and just jump right off the side of the roof. Luckily, except for some scratches, bruises, and perhaps some deep psychological scars, the two men are otherwise okay. Now, cut to two months later, and the team returns, determined to explore inside the creepy house. During another ceremonial offering, they have no idea what their camera is capturing. Did you see it? The team is completely unaware that something seemed to walk by the window upstairs. After careful deliberation, the two men decide to climb the rotten stairs up to the house. Once inside, they see something absolutely horrifying. In an incredibly bizarre turn, a disembodied head can be seen sitting on top of a wooden support beam. The team's host records as he runs away in fright. When the guys go back upstairs, there are no signs of the head, nor are there any signs of anyone or anything having ever been there. So did the investigators capture the paranormal activity that drove away the home's owners? Or is it all just an elaborate hoax? You decide. You can watch this full two-part investigation over on the YouTube channel, RC Fun TV. I didn't hate everything until the outside camera perspective of whatever's crossing this. Okay. And I'll tell you exactly why. When we slow this shit down a little bit, you can see the, the editing wall or whatever it's called. I'm not a professional editor. So I don't, I make up these terms, but like you can see whatever it is that they're watching cross here and then just hit an invisible wall of something that I think that they put in. Like it, it doesn't dissipate like naturally it like disappears into a, into like an invisible wall of like editing issues. You'll see what I mean. Just give it a second. I'll keep talking. Whenever he zooms up in here. See, watch. Right there. There, there. There's like a wall that it hits and then just chunks it. I think it's completely fake. I think the only real thing is something fell when they were moving shit around and Homeboy was ready to, ready to fuck somebody up. I think the rest of it's completely fake. All of it. Inside, they see something absolutely horrifying. Ellie and Stuart stairs up to the house. Once inside, they see something <laughs> absolutely horrifying. Anyone or anything having ever been there. So did the investigators capture the paranormal activity that drove away the home's owners? Or is it all just an elaborate hoax? You decide. You can watch this full two-part investigation over on the YouTube channel, RC Fun TV. Cradle Creeper. Proud parents Kaylee and Stewart have a TikTok account dedicated to their newborn daughter, Rin May. How cute. The account usually chronicles happy experiences from the young family's oh. life. So when this next video was posted, their viewers were shocked.
Night vision cameras first capture a bizarre unexplained shadow in the upper left corner of the room. Then what seems like a creepy little hand can be seen clawing at little Ren May's crib mattress. The newborn sleeps right through it, but Dad Stewart hears the noise and wakes up. And just as Stewart looks over at the crib, the hand quickly disappears out of sight. Parents Kaylee and Stewart are very disturbed by the incident and say that they have no idea what they captured on camera. The final night. <sighs> All I'm going to say about that one is if they are making content and using their baby as the catalyst, like, okay, excuse me, sorry. Let me rephrase that. I have no issue with people using their baby to make content when it's like that cute, adorable shit. That's cool. Whatever. You do you. It's your kid. But if you're using your baby to fake paranormal content to get views, you're a real piece of shit scumbag. And that's some fucked mentality. Like, now you're, 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 you're threatening the idea of your baby in harm. Did you guys hear that on my camera? On my mic? Hmm. Paranormal at my house. Fuck. No, I'm kidding. But yeah, I stand by that. If that's what you're doing, it's fucked up. It's not okay. And you, you should feel really embarrassed and cut that shit out. If it was something real, I don't know, man. My, I would move for your child's safety. If if you really think, if I was those parents and that really happened, and something was reaching for my kid, I'd be out, for sure. Alexander Labuzov from Russia says that he's been living in the same apartment for over three years when suddenly and inexplicably strange paranormal things began to happen around his home. Loud, unexplained noises would wake him up in the middle of the night. Things around the house would move on their own. And scariest of all, one night when he was in bed, sound asleep, someone or something suddenly grabbed onto his wrist, squeezing hard. He jerked his arm away and lurched out of bed, searching his room. But there was no one there. He says that the paranormal activity in his apartment just increased over time until eventually he decided to just move out. So Alex Sorry, I took some ibuprofen. is set to move out of his apartment the next day, but he decides to try to record the strange supernatural activity one last time. This video was meant to be Alex's last night in his apartment. First, he sits in front of his camera and explains what's been going on in his apartment. As he's talking, he hears something strange. Yes, I was just Это не может не Something moves somewhere in the apartment and Alex believes it might have been the kitchen cabinet door. He decides to set up his camera in his bedroom and leaves for two hours to meet up with a friend. Alex turns off the light and leaves, but what happens while he's gone is truly bizarre.
Alex returns home and just goes to bed. The next day, he discovers that his landlord is unavailable to pick up his apartment keys. And after reviewing his footage, Alex is unsatisfied with the potato quality video he has recorded in his dark apartment. Thank you. So, he decides to stay one more night. This time leaving the camera recording, but with the lights on. Just like the night before, he again leaves to meet up with a friend. The camera captures something downright creepy. Oh no! Alex is shocked when he comes home as he discovers that his camera has somehow flipped upside down all on its own. He grabs the camera and begins to film his thoughts on the strange situation. That shit, my pants. What happens next is absolutely terrifying. Я смотрю, у нас сегодня рыбный день. вообще. Dude's tall as shit. Что там осталось? Слушай, ну вообще жесть. Ну что я могу сказать? Это был последний день, поэтому мы уже. Блядь. О. А, до усрачки. Ё... Это можно вообще. Oh, my God. Oh. A pair of legs can be seen standing right behind Alex in the doorway. The legs appear to have no torso and disappear before Alex can even turn around. It's creepy. So, did Alex capture proof of the paranormal in his apartment? Or is it illusion? I leave it up to you. Hmm some nice pants <laughs> ha, 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 ha. what do I think about this one it's tough it's done real it's there's nothing blaring to me that is abnormal aside from the I guess you could call it I, I don't know what term I'm gonna like make up a term like the Goldilocks video because they use Goldilocks in science sometimes like there's so much going on you know so much cups moving poltergeist activity and then just about one of the best uh apparitions I've ever seen right sorry I always forget when I'm in slow-mo we gotta move a lot more so he sees it here wow 
I don't know. The only the only few things that I could openly point out is everything is pulling towards this way, right? The cups, the chair, the stool, the cord, everything going this way. So if, I mean, you, you don't see anything, like you don't see any cords or thin li lines, like, I don't know. So I was going to say, like, if he had, like, super thin fishing line he's pulling everything this way and having the cups pull that way but he's also the cups are hitting this wall right here so i guess that really doesn't explain that i mean i guess if we're thinking fake like the 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 apparition i i'm not i i think is bullshit it's too perfect it's too it's too like clean cut pair of pants you know like it's just i i think that's fake which makes me in turn think everything's fake the only thing that i could think of and, and you guys got to realize when i when i come up with these ideas of how this content could be fake it might seem far-fetched but is it any more far-fetched than it being real right do you really put people past the idea of like making fakes the only other thing that I could really think of off the top of my head, if we're discrediting this whole video, is a green suit. They're they're much more readily available. Like I'm pretty sure. Uh, let me see if I can. Green screen suit. There you go. This is what I mean. $29 and you can get whatever color you want but we're talking a green screen suit and oh here you go here you go $70 gets you full body suit chroma key green screen gloves hood chrome whatever and then a 15 by 9 foot large green screen backdrop for photography yada 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 Ooh, these skin suit ones are weird um so yeah, you're talking 20, 20 bucks and we could have a full green screen to be able to fake videos like that. So I don't put it past people for content nowadays to do that. And to be quite frank, they do it on TikTok all the time, not necessarily in the paranormal world, but there was that one lady who was making, I, I don't know TikTok people, but she was making all these like cool like videos of her like doing these weird like moves and shit. And then like the second channel she had, shows how they did it and 95% of the time it was someone in a green suit who was like lifting her up or like helping her or being like whatever it is like it, it you can't put shit past people because you wouldn't do it if that makes sense you know would you go out and get a green screen green suit and fake a paranormal video probably not but if someone who's dedicating their channel to it and has 30 extra bucks why not why not And that also makes me, okay, now we're adding on top of it, that also makes this much more feasible as to it being a green suit. Because you're only seeing, like it's almost perfectly cut off right at his jean line, which means if he was just wearing a top green suit, that would cut him off. And then this could be a different frame or you could have moved out of frame. Right? Like, this is what I'm saying. If we're not, if, if we're, we're saying this is fake, that's how you would do it. If we're saying it's real, fuck man, that's the best paranormal video I've ever seen in my life. And is that what it is? Because I feel like it would get a lot more notoriety if it was. Kind of feel what I'm saying? Fuck. A pair of legs can be seen standing right behind Alex in the door very closely because it's about to get weird. Oh yeah, we've seen this.
So a very big guy goes charging into the mosh pit when suddenly he seems to get clotheslined by someone or something that is completely invisible and he goes flying backwards. Now that would be weird enough, but his friend helps him up and then he seems to get forcefully yanked backwards again by some unseen force. He even seems to get dragged backwards along the ground. So is this just the ghost of an angry metal fan? Is this guy just an incredible mime? Or what happened here? You tell me. They didn't open up the pit hard enough. Um, I don't remember what I said about the first time I saw that video. Uh, there's not enough. There's not enough to really to explain what's going on. I think he's doing it. I don't think that it's actually like something paranormal. I think that there's uh like a hundred different things in something paranormal. I think it's just weird. It's just weird. Eyes from beyond. This next video was sent in by Nuke's top five viewer Peter Canova. Peter explains in his email that his friend was remodeling a house in Des Moines, Iowa that had been abandoned for over 10 years. Peter's friend shared a chilling video that was recorded by a tile installer named Javier. Oh, bro. Okay. I think this is one of the videos that we watched that I fucking, I really think might be something. no hay están están todos los cuartos vacíos y me da miedo ir al basement pero Verga, a ver, deja deja checar porque ya afuera no hay nada Hola. Wait, no mames. No mames. The loud cries of a child can be heard coming from the basement. Javier checks every room but finds no one. Suddenly there's an unexplained loud bang from somewhere and Javier makes a run for it. Javier refuses to ever return to the house again. Wait, no mames. Hanging around. Like, dude, okay. I remember that video now. So, I feel bad for Javier. Because, like, one of two things just happened. Either there is something really wrong with that house, and it actually, like, there's some fuck shit going on. Or he was the victim of a really mean prank. Uh... But the thing is, is like, we don't know if it's a prank. 
because to me like that like great prank right like you put a speaker downstairs somewhere you play a baby crying through it <clears throat> yada 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 something falling just circumstantial like to add to the like bad timing of the prank or oh, the because like i don't think he did it and i think that was genuine fear like he broke out his cell phone scared thinking like dude i'm working in this house right now working his goddamn day job busting his ass just finished doing a whole shower and he starts hearing a baby crying and he's the only person in the house and he has the absolute testicular fortitude to walk his ass downstairs to make sure that there's not a baby down there like shout out to that guy like that's fucking crazy because most people would be like i'm not getting paid enough for that fuck that baby i don't care but he's like no i go he went downstairs something fell he couldn't see a baby anywhere he just hears crying something falls scares the shit out of him like I, it's creepy that I, that video is crazy that was probably one of my favorite videos of last year that we fought, that we did because like i don't know there's nothing paranormal that we see we just hear a baby crying and i think that javi is the hero that we all should aspire to be Japanese paranormal investigator Gachan from the YouTube channel Clip Store sets out to investigate a creepy old abandoned house in Nagasaki, Japan. The house is said to be extremely haunted. Locals claim that there is a sinister curse on the property after a family mysteriously passed away inside the home under absolutely horrible circumstances almost 15 years ago. As the home is fairly small, Gachan decides to go alone and brings only his camera. Once inside, things quickly get very creepy. Calendar. もし The paranormal investigator believes he might not be alone inside the house and heads upstairs to investigate. Gaichan finds shattered glass and creepiest of all, a knife. 
Soon after, he hears the sound of a bell coming from somewhere inside the house. He searches every room, but he finds nothing and no one to explain the creepy sound. Eventually, the ghost hunter has had enough of the creepy, unexplained noises and decides to just go home. As he makes his way down the old, creepy stairs, he captures something absolutely horrifying. A pair of legs can be seen dropping from the ceiling at the top of the stairs right behind the ghost hunter. Gai Chan leaves the abandoned house having no idea what he has just recorded until he reviews his footage at home. The horrifying sight of the creepy unexplained legs shocks him and his viewers. And now, Gai Chan believes that the house is truly haunted. But either way, true or not, the footage is very disturbing. You can watch this entire investigation over on the YouTube channel, Clip Store. Oh dear. Yeah, we, we follow, we, we've seen a lot of Clip Store stuff. Um, and there's one in particular that I hope is on the list because it blew my absolute mind. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a creepy video. It's a creepy, creepy video. See, I don't know the way that, that those legs are hanging there implies one thing, right? Which I'm not going to mention the word because that's a, a, a naughty word on YouTube, I believe. And I just don't know if they would implicate that even being fake. <clears throat> just because like it's so disrespectful right like because they the way that they started the video is like the house was left there because of horrible you know circumstances which also imply that in my head or murder <clears throat> and if it was the other thing that we're talking about to throw that in at the end even if it isn't post seems really really disrespectful now as far as everything else it all could be relatively faked easily you could have one of your homies walking around upstairs clicking a little bell whatever like nothing crazy but that ending is pretty disturbing and i if it's fake that's kind of messed up on them you know and I, I'm not going to say it's real because, again, that's very, very, very easily legs. Like, that's not something that's mis, <laughs> misidentified. That's definitely a pair of legs hanging there. And it's, I don't know. It's ballsy to put that in if that's the route you want to go. But I guess if your community really believes you, then maybe it's real. I don't know. Terence Leonio from Windsor, Ontario, Canada often goes out into the woods to record himself overtone singing for TikTok and YouTube. One day he decides to stream live and as he starts to sing, he seems to capture the attention of a passing deer. Pretty sure he was looking for where the sound was coming from, but I stopped and started talking and now he's confused. All right. Oh. And there's the deer, but did you see it? 
Terence seems to have caught the attention of something else lurking in the woods. Several strange, slim figures seem to be hiding in the trees behind the deer. Terence's TikTok viewers believe the mysterious creatures could be cryptids, Sasquatch, or even skinwalkers. But what do you think Terence's singing could have summoned from the deep Canadian woods? Child's Play. See, we, we've seen this video too this year, and I, I, this guy's super talented that being able to do that with your voice is amazing. I don't, I think those are just fucking hikers. And he's got a shitty low quality camera like from a distance because it's already pixelated, right? I think those are just people who are walking past. And you know what? I would do 100% the same thing if I heard that. I'd be like, oh my God, what is going on in the forest right now? And I would go over there and see what it is and then just walk back off. Like, oh, it's just some dude doing some shit. <coughs> And there's the deer. People want shit to be weird so bad sometimes, you know? Like if you just would have labeled this like, oh yeah, hikers see me singing and check it out. I mean, oh yeah, that's for sure what it is. <laughs> Not cryptids. Jesus Christ, man. I think Terrence's singing could have summoned from the deep Canadian woods. child's play. Facebook user Ashley Hammond believes that throughout her life she's always had something paranormal attached to her. She says that no matter where she goes, spooky things always happen. When Ashley moves to a new home in Utah, she starts to see hey. her children walking up and down the staircase Utah? on random occasions. Now usually Ashley's children walking up and down the stairs would be completely normal. But you see, this happens when Ashley's children are asleep, or sometimes when they're not even at home at all. Ashley believes that she might be seeing something supernatural that is mimicking the appearance of her children. Now Ashley wants to prove that she is not just imagining these strange phenomena, so she buys a security camera and points it at the staircase. Then one night when all of her children are in bed asleep, this happens. The camera captures a dark figure with glowing eyes that seems to walk up the staircase. A figure that has no visible lower body. So what do you think this could be? Let me know down in the comments. Hold on. Staircase, a figure. Let's go ahead and mark this name down. That has no visible lower body. So, what do you think this could be? Let me know down in the comments. Lady. It's definitely creepy. I mean, we only got one little thing of it. And I, I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at. It sucks because it's like super... Oops. It's super pixelated, right? But... I don't know. Here's what I'm going to do. I live in Utah. I also have a podcast. I'm going to see if I can get her on. And talk about it. And we'll get a straight... Well, we'll get an answer from the source. And we'll see. Wouldn't that be cool? I think that'd be cool. Figure with glowing eyes that her voice. I've seen this too. <laughs> Debbie posted the video to Facebook saying that she saw a scary apparition in the water. She asked friends to take a look and see if they saw the same thing in the video. And they did. Online viewers speculated that the image could be anything from the ghost of a drowning victim to a body in the water. And some even went so far as to suggest that it might be a mermaid. Hmm. Now the most bizarre part of this video is that whatever this is almost seems to lunge toward Debbie before disappearing back into the water. But 
What do you think? Is this just a strange trick of the light or a reflection? Or did Debbie catch something supernatural on camera? You decide. Out of so those pools from Lord of the Rings with all the bodies in it. Uh, no, I, I think that that's a reflection. I don't think that's anything paranormal. And I'm sad that that's number four on the top 20 ghost videos of the year because I think that's fucking stupid. Of left field. For over a decade, Jim Barari worked hard to find the perfect home for her wife, Heather, and their six-year-old daughter, Ray. She eventually found an amazing colonial home in Pennsylvania that was wow. built in the 1700s. That's the sick. house sits on a 50-acre plot of farmland that also has a large renovated barn and two cottages. Wow. But soon after the renovations were finished, strange unexplained events begin to occur on the property. The family began to hear terrifying noises and bangs and even started to see odd shadow-like figures in the middle of the night. They decide to install security cameras in and around their home. And late one night, their outdoor security camera captures something chilling. Someone or something can be seen limping along behind Jen's home. Whatever it is, it makes a very eerie and unsettling moan or screech. At first, Jen isn't sure what to believe and hopes it's just one of her friends or neighbors playing a very strange prank. But over the course of the next three months, the activity becomes more and more unexplainable as the events intensify inside Jen's home. And now, whatever is going on, seems to start to affect her daughter, too. I know that is not moving right now. Don't try by the even. Fan. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah, like, I'm sorry that I curse and... Okay. Okay, can you stop? Oh my god. Okay, please stop. Objects move around and fall on their own, and Jen finds her daughter standing on her bed in the middle of the night, just staring vacantly at nothing. Eventually, Jen becomes convinced that she's dealing with real paranormal activity. She records another video to tell about the unexplainable events that she is experiencing. What happens next is absolutely terrifying. The last two nights have been f***ing awful. I'm gonna just update you guys really quickly. Um, I'm in the barn house right now. I'm here alone. I'm hearing shit constantly. Last night I watched like a bald man walk out of the f***ing pond. I'll show you where it is. It's It was f***ing insane. This is what I keep hearing. And I'm home alone. Hello?
Can you stop? Oh my god, that's creepy. The house is awesome. This clock scared the shit out of me. Here with me, like whatsoever. Hello. Like, I don't know. And my reflection's creeping me out. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. It's a cat. You guys saw that, right? I'm not bugging. Like, here's my reflection. That's just my hair, okay. Hold on, I need to watch this. Guys, I wanted to show you the pond, but please tell me you see that. There's something, it looks like the old man is coming out, I swear to God, what the was that? Jesus, and there's a light out in the God garage. This is so creepy. Hmm. Oh my god, Biggs, it's okay. It's okay. Holy sh what the f Honestly. Okay, let's go. A shadow figure can be seen standing behind Jen in the reflection on the TV screen. She quickly spins around, but there's no one there. What do you mean no one? There's a cat. Then as Jen is looking out the window, another figure can be seen darting past the hallway right behind her. A loud bang frightens both Jen and her cat. And with that, she has had enough. Jen decides to just collect her pets and leave. So what do you think is going on at Jen's farm in Pennsylvania? Jen explains that she is currently seeking help from paranormal professionals as she can't move out and wants her family to be safe. You can watch all of Jen's paranormal experiences over on her TikTok page, Jay Barari. Two point mil, whoa, she's popping off on TikTok. No. Um, no, I think she's a content creator. I think mean, it's all fake. Like every single second of it is fake. The reactions don't seem genuine. Everything seems perfectly planned out. Like it just, it just seems like content. I'm sorry. Like it just, everything seems content. It's just all, cause it's all the same stereotypical paranormal shit reflections and creepy cctv and her kid acting weird like it all seems fake and scripted sorry it does prove me wrong prove me wrong tell me something on this one that seems legit <coughs> none of it does all of it we just have to take face value of what she's saying like there's it's Explains that she is currently seeking help from paranormal professionals as she can't move out and wants her family to be safe. You can watch all of Jen's paranormal experiences over on her TikTok page, Jay Barari. No entry. As with most Japanese videos, I have no idea what the source is for this next creepy clip. The clip shows two guys approaching an old school building that is under renovation and is allegedly haunted. Even though there's tape at the entrance saying no entry, the two friends step inside anyway. What happens next is absolutely terrifying. さあ、<笑><笑> 
お2階なんですよこの部屋の行動くさい行動くないおめっちゃいいわおおお前確かに。今ここか。本当だ。な、うんだっけ、コーン、コーンだっけ。これ、これ、これなんだっけ。なになに。この鉢みたいな。黄色と黒のなんか。いや。知らねえ、俺は知るわけねえんだろう、工事なんてやったことねえ。え<笑>お前はいつかあれだよ、工事で働くんだよ。<笑>ここの部屋、ね、今ちょっと見たらわかるんだけど、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、ここはもう、It seems more genuine because, like, I've taken a lot of people for their first time out to do like paranormal shit, like, just for fun. And there's two distinct things that always end up happening when it's someone's first time going out somewhere haunted. One, they're fucking scared from the get go. And they don't say a word. Or two, they over talk because they're nervous. And these two guys are over talking like they're nervous. To me, it sounds like two friends who are like, dude, let's go make this video. And like, you know, we're, we're tough. Like, we'll, we'll go just go make this video and it'll be cool and whatever. Like, we'll post it or share it or whatever it is. And then they end up. Finding something, but the problem is, is without any source, I'm still left to speculate if it is just someone's school project or you know, a trailer to some movie that never got shown or whatever. Like, there could be a million things. Lee from the YouTube channel Really Haunted lives in a house in England that seems to be a we've gone over this guy so many times that I just I just don't really violent now if you want, want to cover it anymore if you guys like I've, I've seen this video like three or four times it pretty much these two this couple lives in this house and it's crazy haunted they have poltergeist every night the apparitions the whole nine it, you can watch the videos some of it for sure looks fake some of it looks legit it's tough to say it's a lot though and I'm tired of watching these guys Home in Brazil. She believes that her brother never left. Victor, Paolo, and Sam at night to sleep in a caravan outside in their yard, too scared to go back inside the house. The couple says that they have no idea what to do about the violent pair. Gasso, Sobra, and Natura. Be sure to follow Lee's encounters with the paranormal over on his YouTube channel, Really Haunted Brothers Keeper. Paranormal investigators Victor, Paolo, and Samuel from the YouTube channel Investigaso Sobrenatural are contacted by a distraught woman. She claims she's been violently haunted since her brother passed away from an accidental overdose in the bathroom of her family home in Brazil. She believes that her brother never left and that his tormented soul is angry and is attacking her and her family. The woman, whose identity is kept anonymous, says that she believes that the stress of the haunting led to her mother's recent passing. Soon after their arrival, the investigators begin to witness the violent poltergeist activity for themselves. Olha, o, pelo que eu entendi, né? Seu irmão tá fazendo manifestação aqui, o clima tá muito pesado. Não precisa chorar, fica calmo, fica tranquilo, tá bom? Deixa eu ver. Tá bem não, tá? Olha, vai ficar tudo bem. É, você falou que o seu irmão morreu aqui nessa casa, né? tiraram a vida dele dentro de um banheiro. Tem como me mostrar onde foi esse banheiro? Só aqui, né? Ele já começou! Por favor, meu irmão morreu! Como você vai me deixar em paz? Calma, calma. 
Meu Deus, cara. Calma, calma. Respira fundo. Respira fundo. Respira fundo. Calma. Ó, oh, ele só quer assustar, entendeu? Só quer te, te deixar desequilibrado, entendeu? Quer fazer com que a gente fique assustado, entendeu? Nervoso. Respira fundo. Fica calmo, entendeu? Pense em Deus. Pense em coisas boas. Tá bom? Tá bom? Respira fundo. A gente tá aqui contigo. Isso, calma. Viu? Ele só quer tentar assustar a gente. É só um, um, mais um desequilibrado, só isso, tá certo? Você tem condições de continuar? É porque é importante. Tem, não tem? Pronto. É, me mostra como foi que o seu irmão faleceu. Calma, calma. Calma, calma. Pera. Calma, fica calma. O espelho quebrou sozinho. Meu Deus. Vai, filma aí. Toma o espelho, o espelho, toma o espelho, o espelho. Toma o espelho, aí. É isso, gente. Meu Deus. Esse não, pega uma cadeira aí. Tá bem na cadeira? Respira, respira, respira. Ó, vai ficar tudo bem, tá? Mas fala aí que tu vai pegar uma cadeira. Pensa em coisas boas, coisas positivas, né? Foca em Deus, olha, olha, olha pra mim, olha pra mim, olha pra mim, né? Pensa em coisas boas, tá bom? Senta lá, Vai, senta aqui, ó. Vou ficar dando. Vem. Senta. Tô arrepiado, cara. Ó. Olha, olha pra mim. Calma. Calma, calma, respira. Respira. Kitchen plates fall and cookware begins to shake. Then when the woman points out where the bathroom is, something appears to almost punch at her through the curtain. A mirror in the bathroom breaks into pieces. But when they check the room, there's no one there. The woman becomes so upset from the incident that the investigators decide to have her leave. Now, in an attempt to calm the angry spirit, the men gather around a table where the man's body was temporarily placed before his burial. They light candles on the table and begin to discuss the situation. But then, things just get weirder. <laughs> Chora, ela teve que sair, ela é saiu às pressas daqui. Bem melhor, pessoal, ela sai. Tá aí, gente, ó. Aí, aí é pra, 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 pra vocês verem, ver, né, ó. Direto, acontece. Hum, Pega ajuda ele... aqui, não. Pega, calma, calma, calma. Respira, segura, 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 segura aqui a fumadora, segura, segura. The door slams open and the team's cameraman drops to the floor from an extreme panic attack. The investigators look after him and after a necessary break, they continue their investigation. In an attempt to calmly communicate with the aggressive spirit, Investigator Paolo volunteers to lie down on the table in hopes of creating a connection with the spirit. Aí, tu tem certeza que quer fazer isso? Já eu quero ver, né? Tô curioso porque eu quero, né? Eu quero que ele consiga é, entender é, qual é o nosso objetivo, né? Porque a gente está aqui, entendeu? Porque na, na mente dele, ele acha que a gente está provocando, né? Ele está assustando a gente. Entendeu? É até uma oportunidade, né? De, de ele baixar a vibração. As Paolo is explaining his intention, what looks like a ghostly apparition seems to appear behind team member Victor. Paolo lies down on the table. And what happens next is downright terrifying. Se você quiser se materializar em cima do Paulo, pode se, se, se apresentar aqui, né? Concentre sua energia. Se quiser pegar no, no, no braço do Paulo, na perna dele, no pescoço do Paulo, né? Vai, Paulo. Fica à vontade. Se concentra. Tenta pegar no pescoço do Paulo. Meu Deus, 
있어요. 아, 어여, 어여, 어. 어여, 야. você não vai assustar a gente, entendeu? Deus é poderoso, Deus é maior que você, você não, não é maior que Deus, você não é maior que Deus, você não é maior que Deus, Deus é muito maior que você, você não vai assustar a gente, você não vai assustar a gente. Ele tá querendo desafiar, acho que ele pensa que a gente quer bater de frente com ele. Tô me tremendo todinho, cara, olha isso, ó. Filma isso, câmera, tô me tremendo todinho, ó. Olha isso, o sushi, olha isso. Doors from a cabinet violently slam open and closed on their own. Now the previously fearless ghost investigators seem to get just a little bit rattled by the extreme activity. They are completely unsure how to continue. And not long after this incident, they decide to leave the property. So what do you think is going on in this family home in Brazil? Could this really be the brother's spirit lashing out at his own family from the great beyond? Or could there be something a bit more sinister haunting this house. Let me know down in the comments. Exploration gone wrong. Oh man, that's that's like watching a movie. <laughs> um it gave me the chills watching that whole thing. It's tough, man. It's really tough because culturally they handled that a whole lot different, especially with the sister. Just because it's like, obviously, she's still potentially mourning the death of her brother. But whatever, it, it was so aggressive. Everything was so aggressive. And it just seems like, like if you were to like really think of like movie style haunting, that's what that was. You know, and they obviously everything trying to connect everything to God, and that's kind of typical of some, you know, people who want to help in the paranormal world. I mean, it's tough because, like, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know how I feel about this one. Which is rare, which is rare because like this lady is clearly struggling, you know, and if she's acting, she's doing a good job of it. But I assume they blurred her face because she's young. And if she's young, I, I have a more inkling to believe that, I mean, maybe she's not young. I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. But if she is, I just have an inkling to believe it a little bit more. And these guys kind of come in like some smooth operators, right? You know, hey, we got this channel, yada, yada, yada. We do this shit all the time. And it just, it seems like whatever is really going on has even put them in a bad place. Cause like I'll be I'll be completely honest with you like if this started happening to me on that level, like especially these cupboards, I don't think I would have the gumption to hang around. Just in the sense of dangerous level, right? Like I don't ever. There's never been a part of me anywhere I've gone or anything I've seen or to think that like something could harm me. But whatever this could potentially be is good. Now, I'll give you the, the second breakdown of everything. The how do we fake everything. Right? Because, like, the mirror one would probably be the most confusing one to fake. Unless you have some sort of... I don't know. Unless the light hit it. I, I don't I don't even know. I, I don't even know how to explain that one. Everything moving and shaking could be explained. And the drawers, like I guess depending on your budget, right? Like if these guys are making a bunch of money doing this, if they have a high budget, you could just fake like you can get automatic 
like some sort of machinery to make the drawers automatic and just spam it like I've s <clears throat> excuse me I've seen I've seen that before like that's not something completely out of the picture but that would require a budget um this one's tough for me because I come at things in a different light than other paranormal enthusiasts or whatever you want to call me. I, I don't even know what I am, to be honest with you. I don't. Because for me, I don't think that whatever paranormal is, is what we think it is right now. And I've talked about this time and time again, but I don't think that it's this you know trap soul or this you know this person who died in the 1800s or you know this or that like i don't think it's that i think what it could potentially be is something that we aren't able to measure yet technological technologically is that the correct terminology and that as science and tech progresses together we we have come to the understanding that our body produces energy and i hate using the word energy because people immediately think like spirituality bullshit no that's not what i mean we know that we can measure that our body produces energy out as it takes it in, okay and i think that if there is something that we call paranormal happening. I think that it is re energy that had been released in a big moment and is still lingering. And that's what's going on. For example, let's say someone murders somebody. There would be so much used and lost energy right in that moment because you're pushing it all out like you're you're fighting for your life or whatever it is like it's just you know everything all the the body's energy goes in that moment where does it go right like we know like over time our body produces energy just kind of like doing its thing but it's always at like a, a set level but in a moment like that where it's this crazy, everything happening, boom, right then and there, and all this energy gets released, where does it go? Does it dissipate? Does it spread? Or does it linger? Does it linger for a long time? And I think that's why we get these, like, all these haunted locations are murder scenes or self-ending scenes or... Or location not scenes you know or like wars or graveyards or all this type of stuff because there's so much energy produced into that moment and i like i said i don't mean energy like saturn and retrograde energy because i don't believe that bullshit either but i don't think it's i don't think it's what we think it is like what a lot of the paranormal community thinks it is now i don't and i don't i definitely don't think it has anything to do with god or hell or demons absolutely not I think that's the furthest from it but i think there's something that we can't measure that exists in this plane that we leave behind because we know when we die that the dmt in our head gets produced even after our, we're dead right the brain's still pumping it for a little bit of time and we're pushing out all this energy that's what I think paranormal is. So is it possible to think that that energy can potentially be something that does all this? I don't know. I don't have that answer. And I don't know if I will ever have that answer, if we'll ever know. But this video is compelling. It's compelled me enough to share my viewpoint on everything in the midst of this two hour long video i mean we might as well just call this the podcast episode at this point and i i, I don't know 
because and for me paranormal is so interesting right since we're i mean i don't know how many people are going to make it to this two hour mark if you are drop your name down below you might get a special little something but <clears throat> i don't believe in god i've talked about this in several videos i have my series in my experience where i talk about all of it and but i've always been fascinated with paranormal because I, I do think humans have an inkling regardless of what your beliefs are that there's something greater than just this moment in time right and, and people latch on to different things spiritualism religion paranormal like all this type of stuff like you latch on kind of in a hopes of like maybe there is something after we die because it's bleak to think that there's just nothing right and i've always found paranormal fascinating because i think that i was just a horror junkie at a too young of an age and it just transitioned into this paranormal and the more and more that i've dug into it the more and more that i find myself not believing about 95 percent of it but there is five percent out there that i do think is something that we just don't know what it is yet um you know and, and there's i had a guest on a long time ago who made a good point it's like why is it always this this old like from the 1700s or the you know it's never like someone new it's never like something new going on like i don't remember the example that they used it was like where's the guy who's smoking a vape wearing a beanie haunting a location like why does it always have to be this old white woman or this old this man in black like why is it always the same shit and that's the shit that i don't believe because there's so many stereotypes and there's so many things like that everyone shoots for and that's why this video is compelling to me because it's new it's her brother who took his own life probably not shortly after this recording. And whether or not this is all scripted and faked, I don't know. I don't know who these guys are. I don't know anything about their channel. And I don't know anything about the paranormal and their culture. Because culturally, paranormal is seen vastly different throughout the world. And they are very obviously heavily focused on the God side of it let god be here god help us they have the on the table over here they have a whole entire display you know you got your candles you got your display i assume that's probably jesus and his conglomerate of people i don't think that's the proper word to use there but whatever um and it just i like this video because it's it's not the same shit it's not a creepy old guy it's not a it's not a little kid. It's not a little toy. There's something here that is not happy with them being there. And this is kind of creepy by itself. It's a different take on an apparition. You can see its eyes. You can see its mouth. You can see a shoulder and an arm. But is it faked? Is it faked for content? it's possible because i can i can say i'm shaking too because i'm so scared that's not hard to fake it's really easy to fake <sighs> i don't know man it's a tough one let me know what you think let's just check out this honorable mention really quick on in the comments explore i don't know why this is highlighted now never mind got it <laughs> gone wrong. 26-year-old Magnus Rizmir has always had an interest in hiking, and his YouTube channel is dedicated to his explorations of the beautiful countryside of Norway. Almost all of his videos show him hiking, canoeing, or camping, except for one. There is one very bizarre video that Magnus claims was sent to him by a friend. Gamle driten her. 
harness. Guy really tall or the house really small? <laughs> Magnus's friend is out hiking in the middle of nowhere and discovers an old abandoned house. He decides to investigate inside, but regrets his decision almost immediately as something or someone scares the living out of him. Now, whether this video is paranormal, a prank, or maybe even just a very unlucky encounter with a squatter, we'll never know. But what do you think? Real? Yeah, he looks like or a is fucking... it all just an elaborate hoax? It looks like a dude who's just trying to live in that house. You decide. They both look like they ah! get scared and dip out like oh who first off who the fuck is this guy just to walk in that house after only knocking twice like he knocked and knocked and waited maybe 10 seconds and was like ah, i'm just going in <laughs> kind of messed up right followed home now longtime viewers of my channel might remember that almost one year ago i featured a series of videos by a young dutch woman named sabia l Sabia claimed that her apartment in the Netherlands was haunted by something that lurked in the shadows. Something dark and sinister. The cat's out. Oh. Oh, my God. oh my God. As time went by, the paranormal activity in Sabia's apartment intensified, becoming so terrifying that Sabia began to live in abject fear of whatever evil presence might be haunting her home. Nine months ago, Sabia L suddenly just stopped posting to YouTube entirely, leaving her concerned fans and followers wondering just what happened. But then, just three months ago, Sabia made a surprise return to her YouTube channel. She posted only one short video. The post was a positive one, letting her followers know that she had finally saved up enough money to move out of her terrifying haunted apartment. The 30 second video shows Sabia giving one final walkthrough of the empty apartment. Her optimistic video title proclaimed, Last Video, Haunted Apartment in the Netherlands. No more poltergeist activity for me. As you might guess, Sabia L's nightmarish story did not end there. Sabia says that she experienced months of peace and relaxation in her new home. But then strange and disturbing things begin to happen all over again. The odd events quickly became more and more unsettling. One night, the lights in her hallway begin to flicker, so she pulls out her phone and begins to record. She encounters something absolutely horrifying. <laughs> That new house. Okay, I'm gonna 
to fast forward here for a little bit for you guys. Uh, we, we've we covered this one as well in a previous video this year. Um, I think she's just a content creator. And so I'll just I'll, I'll go ahead and sum that one up for you. I think it's all fake. Watch this last one. This neighborhood. It's late at night and no one is around when the men spot something strange going on with a swing set in a nearby park. He's a little freaked out and believes he might be experiencing something paranormal. So he places his work phone on top of a tall playset and sets it to record. He then takes his personal phone and films as he approaches the swing set. single swing is violently swaying back and forth. But that's not all the anonymous man has captured. Because his work phone recorded something absolutely terrifying. The dark creepy figure of a man can be seen standing motionless in front of a tree. Now what makes this footage so disturbing is that as you can see, the other phone didn't capture anyone standing there at all. Could it be that the park is haunted and a dark spirit apparition was caught on camera? What do you think? You can watch this entire creepy video and many more over on the YouTube channel, Fourth Wall. So that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so that you never miss a video. Go subscribe to Nukes Top 5. He's great. Um, that last one, I'll be honest with you, we're two hours and 12 minutes in. My brain's a little fried. We've watched a lot of scary videos. Um, I'll keep it short and sweet. There was, I don't know where they said that that location was at, but there was something like that here in the United States where there was a swing that was just in perpetual motion. And I think they ended up proving that the way that the swing was set up, like the mechanisms were like off centered or whatever. So it's always like a push pull thing. I don't know. They had some sort of explanation for it. As far as the dude standing there, that's definitely done in post. Super fake, super dumb, but Hey, we made it. If you made it this far, big shout outs to you. Thank you so much for watching um yeah two hours and 13 some odd minutes of paranormal fun today i hope you guys enjoyed it i know i did let me know what you think if you agree or disagree with anything and uh like always have a great rest of your day catch you on the next one peace